today I have come to my pantry to find inspiration and I think I've got just the thing. Apples are going to be the star of my first project. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney, let's get crafting. I am very excited about this DIY. So you need one of the bamboo cutting boards from Dollar Tree. You guys have seen me make a Christmas version and just a snack time version. So this is the fall version of the charcuterie board where we do a little wood burning with some torch paste. Now, here's the thing about this DIY. You guys know I keep it real, so Right now, I cut out my stencil, and as you can see, I'm prepping it, getting it ready to put down. I want you to comment down below if you, or when you, see the error that I have made at this point. Um, I honestly just didn't even catch the mistake that I made um, until it was too late. Like, this thing was applied, I was ready to go, and of course, here is the moment I realize that I made a huge mistake. Oh no. No, I didn't. Oh no. Son of a tingle donger. Son of a freaking frick frack. No. Yes, yes, of course it is. Oh my gosh. People are probably watching me going, Corny, you're doing this wrong. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I wish y'all could talk to me through the TV or phone or iPad or computer. Son of a... Jeez, nutcracker pants. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. Oh my gosh, Courtney, you dingle donger. I don't even know what a dingle donger is, but that's apparently what I am. Mm. Ooh, that's saying if you're not first place, you're last. Yep, that's how I feel. <sighs> Definitely not winning the crafting game today. This is what crafting nightmares are made of. Do 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 do. The agony of that lasted way longer than what I showed you, but if you're looking at it going, I don't know what you did wrong. So here's the thing. I had to recut my stencil and because I'm wood burning, I needed to reverse weed it. So basically what I needed to do was to remove all the pieces from my stencil vinyl design that I want wood burned onto the board. And I didn't do that. I left those pieces on there. So now I'm going back doing that. And if you remember the Christmas video, and I will link the tutorials to the Christmas and the snack one down below, along with the cut files, if you guys want to make those, uh, this is a little bit of a labor intensive project. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, it, it's a little tricky to work with the vinyl, making sure that you're getting it stuck on there. You just have to have some patience. You got to have some time. And so essentially once I got it all weeded out and set down on to the cutting board, I was ready for my next step, which was to apply the torch paste. Now it's time to wood burn. So if you are new to my channel and don't know about torch paste, if you like scorch markers, I discovered this torch paste last year and y'all, I absolutely love it. I prefer this to the scorch markers. I think it gives a more um, just kind of deep burn, a cleaner burn. And I just really, really like the torch paste. So to work with it, all you have to do is just to apply it to your design and let it sit for about three minutes. For a project like this, by the time I was done going over the entire design, I was about ready to go ahead and pull the stencil off because it does take a few minutes. You want to make sure though that you put on really thin coats. If it blobs up in areas when you go to burn it, sometimes that can splatter a little bit if you have globs of it. So just make sure you put on a very thin coat. Once it's on there, it's done the three minutes time. You just pull off your stencil and grab out your heavy duty heat gun. Now I say heavy duty because the little small craft ones do not get hot enough. You need the big honker to get this burned into your cutting board. So the key here is just to continue to move the heat and eventually it will start burning. Now, one thing about it, if you don't like kind of the extra burn 
on the wood, let's, let's say around the design, um, then you're gonna wanna hold your heat gun up a little bit higher, but it will lengthen the time of the project. It will take a quite a bit longer to do it that way. So what I did was I just held mine close, I let it burn, and then I went back in and any spots on the cutting board that were kind of light colored, I just swiped the heat gun over it to kind of give it more of a balanced look. For the other two trays, I did not do this, but for this one, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to add some feet to it. So I grabbed four of the wooden dice from Dollar Tree and my heat gun again. And I did just hit those dice with the heat gun to kind of get that wood about the same tone as my cutting board. And then for this, I used some strong adhesive glue. I used the Gorilla Glue Clear Grip to attach the feet to the bottom of the cutting board. And then I put some weight on it and let that set up for 24 hours. The final step for this to make it food safe is you want to start by taking a baby wipe and just wiping down any of the extra residue that's there from the burning. And I just keep wiping until the baby wipe comes up clean. And then to seal it, you guys know I've shared this product many times. I like to use the Howard's Butcher Block Sealer. And this honestly, if you just follow the directions, it works a little better. Just warm it up a little bit in the microwave and apply it with a, a lint-free rag or even a paintbrush that you designate designate just for food sealing and paint that on and then you're going to let that sit for 24 hours and then I usually go in with 320 sometimes 220 it just kind of depends on what it is I'm talking super light sanding again wipe it with the baby wipe and I like to do three full coats of the sealer to make sure that this is nice and food safe and now comes the fun part let's get this board decorated You guys probably know that I love a good s'mores craft and I knew I had to make a version of my little cubed marshmallow that I made, I think last year, but I needed to make a fall slash Halloween version. So I've grabbed four of the wooden dice from Dollar Tree, an orange paint, a green paint, a white paint, and I also have a cream and tan because I'm gonna kind of do some mixing. So for these, you want to paint them just those colors, one of them orange, one of them green, one of them white. And for that last one, just mix. You kind of want like a lightish tan. You could even do a super light yellow if you wanted to. Now you might notice that one of the sides is not painted. That's totally okay. You're gonna wanna grab some paint markers. For the one where you mix the two colors of paint to try to get that kind of lightish color, you're gonna need black and orange. You wanna draw a scarecrow face on that wooden cube. For the orange wooden cube, you wanna take that black marker and make a jack-o'-lantern face. For the white one, you wanna make a ghost face. And then for that green one, you want to draw on a Frankenstein face. Here comes the fun part. You wanna grab some colored glue sticks. You guys know I love to work with those. So for the orange jack-o'-lantern, I decided to use some white hot glue and then I used some faux black and orange sprinkles, then decided it needed a little something extra. So I took some orange and white ribbon, tied it to a bow and attached that to the top. For the scarecrow, I had some tan sprinkles set aside, but I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to use those. I found this pack of scarecrow hats at Dollar Tree. So I grabbed one of those out 
just used brown hot glue and then just kind of attached the hat kind of sideways on the scarecrow head and called that good. For the last two, I'm gonna be using black hot glue and on the Frankenstein, I'm using green and purple sprinkles and on the ghost, I'm using white. Now, one thing I did want to mention is as far as if you're working with this and you have to change your glue stick, sometimes it can get blobbed up or there's a little bit of a gap and it's not looking very smooth. All you have to do is hit it with your heat gun. You can smooth out the glue. So if you, you know, you do your initial little application of the hot glue and decide you want to add more to kind of blend it together just take that heat gun and it will just blend it all and make it nice and smooth This DIY is super easy. You might remember back in the Christmas in July video that I did for Shannon's collaboration, I made some fun Christmas drinks. So I wanted to make a fall version and I made this printable. It will be linked down below in the description box along with everything else you see in today's video, along with the design bundle file, because honestly it came with like, I don't, I don't remember, 10 different fun fall. So I will link that file down below if you want to purchase it and make your own printables. But I just printed this off on cardstock trimmed it down with my Fiskars paper cutter and I just used a glue stick into one of these little Hobby Lobby clearance signs that I had, stuck it in there and that's it. I'm keeping it super simple. It's just something to kind of a little to put next to my coffee maker in my kitchen. Time to do a thrift fillip. So I found this little dough bowl arrangement at my local Goodwill, picked it up and decided I wanted to turn it into some kind of fall little piece. I started by removing the insert and taking the candle holders off, putting that aside. And for the dough bowl, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I didn't really wanna paint it. I just kind of wanted to darken up the wood. So I just used some brown wax and wiped on a coat of that all over the outside of the dough bowl. I wasn't worried about the inside because it's going to be filled in. And then I took a cloth and just buffed that out to kind of get it a nice sheen and set that aside. To finish getting the insert ready, I removed all the stuff. I popped off the candle holders and then I used my Dollar Tree pool knife to kind of shave off that extra moss that was on there. Took some alcohol wipes, cleaned the candle holders really good, set those aside. And then um, once that was done, I realized, okay, I'm gonna put the candle holders back in. And then I took some just regular moss. I didn't glue it down. I just kind of patted it all around to fill in the bottom area. My original plan for this was to work in a bunch of pumpkins all around. I had tons of pumpkins left over from Dollar Tree from last year. And so I thought I was going to do that. And then I just, I don't know, I was just really struggling with this, <laughs> trying to make it look how I wanted to. So I had a bunch of sunflowers in my stash that I got quite a while ago, I believe from either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I can't quite remember. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to stick these sunflowers around it. And then for the inside, you could either go candles, but I did opt to use some fairy lights. I got a huge pack of these from Amazon for like, I think they were $9.99 or something for like 15 packs or something like that. I don't know. I'll link them down below because they have a kind of a copper colored wire, which is great for fall. They're battery operated. So I just threw those in there and then I just left this just kind of simple and I really do like it.
That wraps up another round of fall DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these was your favorite. Also, let me know what would you put on your little apple charcuterie board if you made one? What kind of toppings? Because I would love some more ideas for that because my kids absolutely love this thing. And funny enough, so you may remember I went on that cruise with Shannon in July. I had full intentions of uh, vlogging every crafting session, but guess what? We only went to one and it was diamond painting. painting. Have you ever diamond painted? Because it, it was fun, but we were there for like two and a half hours and it was very time consuming and that was all. So I had no footage to actually do it. So with that being said, with pinners coming up and me being with Whitney, Shannon, and Jennifer, I am planning to vlog that experience. I'm bringing my camera. I know Whitney is bringing hers. So if you have a question for Whitney, Shannon, or Jennifer, drop it down below in the comments and I will see if I can try to get it answered for you during that vlog. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really do appreciate it. If you love what you see today, I would love for you to stick around and become one of my creative club members. Here are some more videos you might enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye.